Today we have a titan battle in the heavyweight division. Sony's A95L Master Series QD OLED versus the Samsung S95D third generation QD OLED. Up next. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Brian. This is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's comparison happened out of nowhere. I was at Value Electronics shooting the S95D third generation Quantum Dot OLED in a bright room. Since the matte screen has gotten so much hate, it's basically considered a useless TV at this point. Everyone and their mother is recommending the S90D. That is a mistake. The S95D is still a beast. I'm not a fan of the matte screen, but I went there to shoot it in a brighter room. However, right next to it was the A95L Master Series 77 inch QD OLED. Second generation QD OLED versus third generation QD OLED. Both 77. I was able to bring them together and do this comparison for you. Now, for those of you that know me, I was not a big fan of the matte screen when I saw at CES. I did an entire video on it. Then I saw at Samsung's headquarters in a light-controlled room and saw its use case. But now the narrative has swung so the other way where it's become this useless TV that many of you are just skipping by what you've seen and heard. Well, what I'm gonna tell you and show you, not just in this video, but in the next video, is spending time with it in different environments, different real environments, not taking a spotlight from a helicopter and putting it on the screen. But my comparisons, just so you know, I will show you your professional versus filmmaker. I will show you your movie versus cinema. They're not calibrated, but in these two presets, they can look identical. We will then get rid of that, and I will show you what the third generation QD OLED can really do. If you're somebody who likes Samsung, you want that signature. Sony has its own signature. Um, director's intent, natural, things of that nature. XR clear. However, Samsung with the S95D, with this TV that's been completely thrown away, which I'm partly responsible for, will show you in this um, video what it can do when it's let off the chain, when some of its own processing and some of its freedom is given back to it. This will be a long comparison. I enjoy them long. I leave them long for the community that watches them. I hope you enjoy. I had a blast shooting them, and it was eye-opening for me, and I hope it is for you. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, let's do it. Sony A95L Master Series, second generation QD OLED versus the S95D, third generation QD OLED. Now we're gonna start by going through the presets of each one. We will match them in this way. Professional versus filmmaker. Cinema versus movie. Dynamic versus vivid standard versus standard now i'm just showing you step by step how we change them now by matching them what i mean by that is whatever the tone mapping calls for in that specific preset on um, sony it would be brightness preferred or gradation preferred on a samsung it would be static or active those will be matched though they are in similar presets the tone mapping does behave that way meaning in filmmaker mode you will see static as the tone mapping for samsung and in a professional it will be gradation preferred we will match the color temperatures as well dynamic for Samsung only has cool and standard. It doesn't have warm and dynamic. So we will match them that way. And that is it. Meaning also if there was live color enabled, which there is in both standard and vivid, we will also match that with the color booster from Samsung, which is a new feature. So you will see them do battle on as even ground as they can. That is my goal in this comparison for you guys you will see them look very different that is the point i want them to look how they should by their own signatures now for me taking away all the processing and all the strengths of each individual preset that's why we have filmmaker versus professional professional being on the sony filmmaker on the samsung cinema and home or um, I should say cinema and a movie are very similar as well. You will see that there's little differences. We'll do 
different shots, I will label which preset we are in. There is no advantage given to either one, except for what the manufacturer deems. As I mentioned, we will match them as closely as we can in terms of color temperature and tone mapping. But I want to be able to walk through this little part of it, show you how they're set up. The Sony A95L is on the left, Samsung S95D is on the right. This took me many hours. You will see the time of day change. I did this portion actually at the end, so it's already dark. You'll see me start in the afternoon. I was there to see how the S95D would behave in a very bright room. That video will be up next. We are not in a pitch black room either. You'll see some reflections on the A95L. You'll also see some reflections on the S95D from the A95L being right next to it. They both look absolutely amazing. Now we are at 77 inches. You have to be able to have these sizes to speak on them and their performance. 77 inch is brighter. They always have been. Moving into our first demo from a good friend, Jennifer Gala. You're looking at professional versus filmmaker. They look very similar here. We're going to come back to this. We're going to go back and forth throughout this video. So don't get worried if you don't see a preset for a long period of time. We're going to go back and forth as we move in to cinema versus movie. They are matched in regards to their temperature and their tone mapping. Whatever processing is on one is on the other. Cinema and movie look very similar. There is still some brightness differences on the Samsung. I do feel a bit more detail on the Sony. We do have XR clear. Their processing is still better. S95D has an improved processor, but it is a retooling of last year's. Now we're looking at a third gen QD OLED from the Samsung S95D versus a second gen from the Sony A95L Master Series. Being at Samsung Displays at CES, showing you guys that video, they are far apart in terms of their capabilities. You will see that later in the video. But if you keep them in these two presets, I can do this the entire video until the cows come home and they will look identical. You need to stretch its legs. You need to go outside the box once in a while, which is why I want to show you guys everything these TVs can do up and down the line. This is how you will watch them. Most people out of the box will not be in these two presets, but I show you uh, cinema and movie the most. You may go into them when you're streaming. But filmmaker and professional, you may not wander there. Most of them will ship in standard. That's actually the most popular preset of most manufacturers. Now, so far you see them relatively the same, almost exactly the same, which is funny considering how badly beat up the S95D has been because of the matte finish and because of its, uh, the way it looks, it's being thrown away. It is not the case. I'm telling you, I've spent hours upon hours with several different sizes. It's a monster. Now we will pause here. We will change the preset into standard. Again, when I talk about displays for you guys, it's always flexibility of image. Accuracy, important. Director's intent, important. But what you want out of your TV is most important. It is your TV. There is no judgment. You'll see what happens to the image when I get out of these similar presets, out of Filmmaker. Now you're gonna lose some detail when I switch over. The camera will reset once this demo resets. The detail will come back. The clipping you see is the camera. There is that same detail in the S95D as we restart the same demo. Now standard is not vivid. This is a very common preset and all of these presets can be turned down. For clarification, there is no blooming on the S95D. That would be clipping on the camera. That's the haloing you're seeing. It's not even the screen, but you will see a noticeable brightness difference on the S95D. I repeat, no blooming on the S95D. 
and I'm leaving it bright, meaning I'm not adjusting it to compensate for them both. I don't want them to look the same. I want you to see the differences in brightness. It's not clipping. The saturation, the color. The color booster is enabled on the Samsung and live color is enabled on the A95L. Not out of the box, the A95L's color booster is at medium, or I should say the live color is at medium. Therefore, the S95D's color booster was brought to medium. Back in to your more accurate professional and filmmaker. The reason why I want to go back and forth is show you realistic images now of food. Again, special shout out to good friend Jennifer Gala and her second channel, HDR Super Channel. Check the description below for the links to her videos. Side note, fellow creators, if you're going to use Jennifer Gala's amazing material, please give her a shout out or put her name at least in the description below. Thank you so much. I love the color reproduction of both. Samsung starting with last year's S95C, even the B were amazingly accurate out of the box in certain presets. One would argue that the filmmaker mode and even the movie mode are a little too aggressively trying to be Sony. I've always wanted Samsung to remain Samsung, that vibrant, saturated look. But what you get with the S95D is the ability to be both very accurate and off the charts colorful. Accurate or not. Now what I think is fascinating is for me when I first saw the A95L last year versus everything else, especially the A80L which is the TV that I have at home, the saturation and vibrancy was blowing me away. It's amazing how it performs now against a third generation. Of course, it holds its own and looks better in a lot of these shots in terms of accuracy and detail. That is the processing. You can see me switch it up on the fly here. Bringing it back to cinema and movie. And you can see here, even as I switch it up on the fly, they do still look similar. So for those of you that want director's intent, you can see in the background where Sony A95L's depth of field's a bit better. A bit more detail there, it can be a bit blown out. But they both look absolutely amazing. Now moving in to this next scene, same video. Again, we're gonna go through the presets and show you how different each one can look. Special thank you to Value Electronics. We're shooting in their Scarsdale location. Please consider making your next AV purchase through them. Check the description below for all their information. Let them know that Brian at Bratton's Tech Therapy sent you. What an amazing gift to be able to film uh, these two. I was filming the S95D again in a bright room. A95L wasn't exactly next to it. We moved them around to get them both in frame. And what an amazing gift. The best videos I've ever shot there have been by accident or they were not something I was thinking I would shoot. Now we're gonna move into vivid and dynamic. If you like these presets, I will not judge you. I don't care. I just want you to be happy with the TV you buy. I am simply here to show you the headroom you have. There are times where the Sony can look more vibrant. For me, the Samsung is clearly brighter in every shot. Depending on the shot's um, style, it may show it more than not. What I like about both of these presets is they are usable. Many people will tell you that if you tone any vibrant preset down, it can be usable. Just back things off, back off your sharpness, back um, change your color temperature. Now the color temperature has been changed, except on this uh, Samsung, there's only neutral and cold. So the Sony has matched that into its standard temperature. You can't bring them exact in these two presets simply because Samsung only has two to choose from. We're gonna stay in Vivid and Dynamic for a few more demos, give you a real feel for the differences in image and the headroom that is available on the third generation QD OLED. Now, does the matte screen play a part in any of these comparisons? It actually didn't. 
the A95L actually had more reflections from the lights above me. The S95D's reflections were only from the A95L that is basically pressed up against it. The next video I do with the S95D will show you bright room performance. It is amazing for what it does, its use case. It is not a good beach TV, but I will tell you in a very bright room, when you see that video, every TV in the room is struggling, except they have massive reflections and the S95D gets grayish white, but only where the sun hits it. I am a glossy screen guy myself, but you have to be able to recognize what the use case is. To unceremoniously throw the TV away is absurd, and to recognize or at least recommend the S90 now as the default is not what I recommend. I do feel there is a bigger delta between the S95 this year and the S90 um, than it was last year from the 95C to the 90D. And even last year, I still would have gone after the 95C. I want that difference. I want to pay for that difference. I want the higher end bit of performance. And I do feel the 95D is significantly better than the 90D. Now we're going to move out of dynamic and vivid into the more popular standard. Now it's not really about for me to tell you which one is better, it's about which one you prefer. I will say this throughout the video, the S95D can look very much like the A95L without going crazy with the settings, meaning you're not taking contrast anywhere. With its own presets, it can look just like the A95L. The opposite can't be said. The A95L cannot look like the S95D in those crazier presets. You see that here in the whites on the S95D versus the A95L. This is not WRGB versus QD OLED. That is what shows up on screen, those whites. What's ironic is the A95L's white is very white versus a WRGB OLED, but not against a third generation QD OLED. So I was very impressed. Now quickly, if I'm bought by Samsung, and also bought by Sony or bought by LG. Guys, you gotta pick which one I'm bought. I'm allowed to change my opinion and perspective with the more time I spend with these TVs. You can see the differences in brightness here. I'm letting it be bright. I'm not trying to adjust the camera. But my point of saying that to you is this. That's why these aren't finite reviews. I spend tons of time with every different size i don't get a tv unbox it review it and send it back i've hit this tv four or five times already a95l five ten times i can't wait to see them compete in the shootout what i'm saying to you is i can admit that i was a little too harsh on it i still don't love the matte finish but it does not ruin the image to a degree you're seeing it here I will say the S95D is very good in a very dark room. The challenge I think a lot of you are having is that's not what we thought the point was. We thought it was gonna be better in a bright room. QD OLEDs, especially Samsung S95B and S95C are useless in a bright room if the sun hits it directly, but the sun has to hit it directly. The S95D is no different. Arguably the matte finish behaves worse if the sun hits it but it has to be right on it, guys. The sun, as you'll see in my next video, can be in the room, it just can't shine on it. Now that overblown again is my camera. I'm not trying to adjust that. I wanna leave that so you see the differences in brightness. But you still may prefer the detail on the Sony. my joke about being bought, then I guess Sony's gonna be very mad at me for liking the S95D or G4 is gonna be mad at me because that's the TV that I want. But I will tell you, I want the 83 inch LG G4. The S95D is that good. If it was 83 inches, I would need to see them compared for me to make a decision. That's how good it is. as the G4 doesn't really have the gaming 
advantage over the S95D to give it the pull. This is the one disadvantage for Sony releasing their TVs later in the year. They're only top dog for four or five months before something else comes out. Same thing happened to the A95K. Now we are splitting hairs, everyone. These are both amazing. Ridiculous, in fact. I would definitely give the processing still to Sony, the more natural image to Sony. Which is ironic because many of you purists think XR Clear gets away from the director's intent. I am not Scorsese or Spielberg. I am not really that worried about exactly what the director intended. I do respect it. I am not stuck to it. And guys, if I like something last year, I am not marrying these. <laughs> I am not marrying them and saying, oh my God, this is the best TV. I got to stay with it. It's not the case. That's the best part about what we all do here. Me, you, the whole community. For those of you in the community, thank you so much for watching these long premiere videos. I love you guys. I appreciate all of you that watch these videos live with me. I leave these videos long so we can watch them. I want you to see as much as you possibly can. See them in different presets. There is no value at all, in my humble opinion, to putting them both in filmmaker and professional and giving you a 10 minute video and saying, yep, they're exactly the same. They are not the same. The G4 is not the same as the G3 and vice versa. They can be made to look the same depending on the content and the preset. Now, if you're gonna calibrate these TVs and leave them in filmmaker, grab the A95L, grab last year's TV. Though I consider the A95L this year's TV. They're both amazing. But if I was to buy one right now at the same size, I would go for the S95D for my specific use case. I would want the brighter panel and I would want the better gaming features. That is my specific use case, everyone. Let me know in the comments what your specific use case is. If you have an A95L, do not get upset. It is amazing. I wasn't planning on doing this comparison as I mentioned. We're gonna repeat this same demo in a punchier preset. It is important to see both. You can see the jump there in brightness. It changes the image completely. But you wanna be able to have that flexibility, guys, especially if you like that signature. Now, if the colors and the image from the Samsung are too much or they're too strong, then you know it's not for you, but you have to know it. You have to be able to see it for yourself in a 30 minute video versus an article or somebody disliking the TV and comparing them exactly the same. You have to have flexibility of image to know what you want and what you want to see. Now for context, when I saw a special Samsung event, first look at CES, FOMO when I saw that, we saw the S95D with lights on it versus a WRGB OLED. Then with the lights off, I still preferred the WRGB OLED, which is why my opinion was so strong on the matte finish. In that environment, or with that particular display, there were lifted blacks. I did not see this on my time, either at Samsung headquarters, which again was a very light controlled room to seeing it here of course i need to tell you what i see you don't stay stuck on one thought process that's why hitting these tvs again and again throughout the year is so important now even though i'm covering the s95d i'm thoroughly done with it i'll still get a sample from samsung to check out for you guys to see where it is in terms of firmware updates how it competes against other tvs this year we're not done covering it. But as you can tell by my voice, I am passionate about what we do here. I enjoy it. It's why it's called tech therapy. There are emotions attached to it. But seeing the narrative of a certain TV get slapped around, one, I helped start. It's not as accurate or it should say it's not as cut and dry as that. There is much more to it than that. If you don't like Matt, I completely understand. 
The one thing I will say is something with heavy grain seemed a bit grainier. Not sure if that's the screen or perhaps the processing. I also watched several movies. I was there for about 12 hours. When I shoot, I am there for a long time. It's not just demo material, it's movies, it's sports. Due to copyright on YouTube, I cannot show you that. I will not risk this channel for that. I can only tell you what I saw off camera. Jennifer's material that you're seeing within this video is mind blowing. I would still give the upscaling ability probably to the Sony, though the upscaling is good on Samsung. It's not night and day. That retool processor is a bit more detailed than last year. But what was jarring, as I mentioned, seeing Samsung display showed me third generation versus second generation, and then seeing Samsung's first look, it did not look to have that disparity. Because also at Samsung's uh, displays event, they showed WRGB OLED versus a third gen, and it wasn't close. Seeing that first look, you can ask FOMO who was standing next to me. I thought the WRGB looked better with light on it and in a dark room. I don't know if it was that particular panel or what they were doing, but it is not what I see here. But flexibility of image, both of them have tremendous headroom. They can both look very accurate and very punchy. But I will say the S95D has more headroom. It is significantly brighter. I'm not measuring it. I don't need to measure it. I'm telling you what I see with my own eyes and what I experienced in both SDR and HDR. Now, though they are the same technologies, they're all they're both made from Samsung Display. It's not about Sony slapping their name on it. It is still their processor, their build. It is just the screen. Everything else is them. And that signature is here. Now we're later in the video, what do you guys think? Does this change your mind? Does this bring more balance? Or are you thinking, heck, I have no use for this? I will tell you, the S95D looks great in a dark room. Where it really, really excels is in a room with ambient light, meaning your lamps. Meaning lamp behind you, lamp next to you, you won't see them at all. That is pretty amazing. That's the way most of you watch them. I will not say the A95L was something I could watch in a sun-drenched room. The reflections are crazy. With the S95D, there's no reflections at all, but when the sun hits it, it's just white. <laughs> so that's not watchable either. But for what it intended to do, it does it amazingly. It looks crazy that to where the image looks like it's painted on because it's not just a mat, it looks like a felt or a cloth. When it's off, it actually does look pretty high-end. It doesn't look like a smeary uh, mat that we've seen in the past. Now, is it the same mat as you see on a bunch of monitors? They're not, it's their different glare-free technology. But I'm warming up to it, to where I would consider it if it was at 83. Remember, I'm in the heavyweight division. 77 inch is actually more of a light heavyweight cruiserweight division. What do you guys think? How did the S95D do against last year's champion? It wasn't just a value electronics champion. It was most people's favorite display last year. I don't want to see you buy the S90D just because you think of the finish. The S95D is better, in my opinion. I can't speak to dropouts. I gamed on it for, I don't know, three, four hours. I didn't have any problems. But, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Brian. This is Brian's Tech Therapy. Please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. Take care.
Spinner Burn!